is Gina. Today I'm going to show you how to make this little beachy looking little bracelet. Now, in my video, I didn't put the little charm on, but um, as an afterthought, I did. So I just put two little jump rings and then I attached this little seashell charm to the loop on the clasp itself. So it's just two little four millimeter jump rings. So I did not do that in the video. It was an afterthought, but I thought it would be really cute because it will go really nicely with the necklace I made in the previous video, this one here. So this will be part of a set and um, it goes together very nicely. This is what we're making today. It is with the Deep Sea Jewels treasure bag. However, these beads can always be substituted for something you have in your stash or very soon I will have these in my online store. So if you want some, you can get them. Let me put this on and show you what it looks like and then we will get started with this project. This turned out really cute. But you know, it's really difficult for me to put bracelets on. So give me just a second. I'm just not that coordinated. Okay, there we go. So this is what it looks like. And here is the clasping and the charm. And I think that's really cute too. So there's what that looks like. And let's go ahead and look at the, um, you know, materialist. <laughs> Let's go to the next section of the video. Okay, meet you there. Okay, for this project today, we will be using some beads from the Deep Sea Jewels treasure bag and adding some beads to that. However, if you do not have the treasure bag, you can always substitute the beads for something very similar and make something just as pretty. So, what we're going to be using from the treasure bag is a 7.5 or 7 millimeter by 4.5 millimeter column bead. This is painted crackle glass, painted baked crackle glass and they're little column beads. And I will have some of these on my website real soon if you want some of them. They're really pretty beads. So we're going to be using those and then we're going to be using some 11 -0 seed beads and I have the galvanized permanent finish aluminum Toho and then we're going to be using two colors of 80 seed beads these are both Toho and one is the opaque turquoise and the other is a frosted white a little bead got in there and then we're going to be using some fireline I'm going to use six pound fireline you can also use eight or ten pound nano fill that will work just fine I'm using a size 12 beading needle and I'm also using a toggle clasp and this is the toggle clasp that's in the treasure bag. So the only thing from the treasure bag today is this and this. And you can use any clasping you would like, of course. This particular pattern will work with anything shaped like a cuboid, a, a elongated cuboid, maybe even elongated bicone. In this treasure bag alone, you have some this shape. They're a little bit smaller. So the particular stitch will work with something this shape. You'll just have to modify the length of your bracelet and maybe the size of your seed beads um, for your the beads that you decide to use. But this can be used with other beads. So go ahead and put an arms or a wingspan of fire line onto your beading needle. That's when you spread your arms out to your side like their wings. You measure from the fingertips of the first arm, the length of the first arm, across your chest, the length of the second arm, and to your fingertips. You will probably need to extend your fire line during this particular project and I will post a link in the description box beneath the video player to teach you how to do that if you do not know how. Go ahead and thread your beading needle and let's get started. Let's start this project by picking up one of our column beads onto the needle and then you're going to pick up an 8 in the white color or whatever color you're using your first color and then you're going to pick up an 11 and then the other color so I'm going to pick up a turquoise and then an 11 and then another of your first color so for me it will be my white I'm going to bring these beads down to the end of the thread I'm not going to leave a long tail but I'm going to leave enough so that my beads 
don't slip off. And then I'm just going to go back down while holding on to the tail and the big bead, I'm going to go back down into the big bead. And I'm going to pull these seed beads up against the big bead. So this is what you have now. Now hold on to that tail, hold on to the big bead, and then pick up a white 80, and then pick up an 11 0 and then your second color, which is turquoise for me, 80, and then an 11 0, and then a white 80, like this. And I'm going to go back through the um, column bead, and as I go back through, I'm going to go ahead and go through the 80 and 11 0 on the other side and pull this down. Everything's going to get messed up. Make sure you're holding onto your tail, holding onto your big bead, and then pull on the tail and pull on the working thread and arrange everything so that it looks somewhat like this. Let me get you just a little closer, rearrange my camera, and that's what you should have. Now, it's still not real neat and organized, so we're going to sew back through it. I'm coming out of this 11 0 here. I'm going to go into the 8 0 and then pull my thread. And then I'm going to go into the 11 0 and 8 0 on the other side and up through the column bead through the 8 0 and 11 0 on the other side, like this. And I'm just going to pull my thread through. And then I'm going to go through the 8 0. And then I'm going through the 11 0 and 8 0 on the other side. Now, when you go through your seed beads, you want to make sure that you go through just the two on the sides together and the one on top by itself so that you kind of retain the shape that you want. Now, we're coming through the column bead here. So, we're going to go ahead and sew up into the 8 0 and 11 0. Pull everything tight, make sure it looks good, and then go up into the 8 0 on top here. Now, we're going to put our clasping on so that we don't have to come back and do it. So, what we're going to do is we're going to pick up two 11 0 seed beads and then an 8 0 and we're going to drop the 11 0 the 11 0s and the 8 0 down to the piece just like this then i'm going to pick up my clasp and i'm going to go through the loop on the clasp bring it down to the 8 0 seed bead here and then just go through just the 8 0 just like this and i'm going to pick this up hold on to the 8 0 and just slide my thread through until I can guide everything down and organize it, just like this. Now we're going to pick up two more 11 0 seed beads and we're going to go into the opposite side of the bead we're attaching to. So we're going to go into this 8 0 here on the opposite side and pull the thread through. And this is what you should have. Now we're going to sew back through this entire thing twice just to make sure that it is nice and secure and neat. So we're going to go through these two 11 O's. We're going to go up into the 8 O and into the clasp. Then we're going to go back down into the 8 O and the two 11 O's on the other side like this. And I'm going to hold on to it, pull my thread through, and then go back through the 8 0 seed bead. Now, go ahead and do that one more time. Get close so you can see what I've got. Go ahead and sew through the entire thing one more time, and we'll be back. Okay, so I have reinforced my clasping, and this is what it looks like. And now I'm just going to cut this little tail thread down really close to the piece and I'm going to travel down through the beads to get to this one so that we can start our next unit. So I'm just going to go from the 8 I'm exiting after securing my clasping 
into the 11-0 and 8 next to it, and then down through the big bead. Let's see if I can get through there. And then I'm just going to exit. Then I'm going to go through the 8 and 11 right underneath where I'm coming out of that bigger bead, right there. And then I'm going to go up into the 8 here. Now we will pick up onto our needle to make our next unit an 11 and then a white 8 and then a cylindrical bead. We're going to drop it down. Oh, come on, you. And then we are going to pick up a white 8 and then an 11 and then a turquoise 8 and 11 and then a white 8 just like this. Then we're going to pick up that crackle bead here, this um, column bead. I call it a million different things, but the column bead. And then I'm going to hold on to that column bead and pass my needle just through it. Holding on to it, I pull the beads down until they arrange themselves on top. And then you kind of have to pull on the thread again to make sure there's no slack in this portion here. Get you a little closer so you can see, and then let's pick up a frosted white 8 0 and an 11 0 like this. And we're going to go through the 8 0 on the opposite side from which we started attaching, just like this. And then we're going to pull it through, and this is your second unit. So what we're going to do now is sew through the entire unit. And we're going to sew through every unit twice because otherwise you will have a very loose, sloppy, and a not very strong piece. So we're going to go through the 11-0, the 8 and the bigger bead. And then we're going to go through the 8 and 11 underneath the bigger bead. here and through the 8 on the bottom here and then I'm just going to continue sewing all the way around so I'm going to go into the 11 and 8 here come up through the column bead go into the 8 and 11 here and back into the 8 that we've attached this unit to right there now we are completely secure. The unit's nice and neat and tight. So now, sorry about that, there we go. We have to sew down to this 8 so we can start our next unit. So we'll go into the 11 8 and the column bead. Then into the 8 and 11 And then into the 8 on the bottom here, just like this and pull this through and we're ready for our next unit. Let's do another unit. Back off just a little here. So we will start by picking up an 11 and then a frosted white 8 and then a column bead and we'll drop it down. Then we will pick up a frosted white and then an 11 and then a turquoise 8 and then an 11 and then a frosted white 8 just like this, and we will drop it down. Again, we'll pick up that column bead and go back through it and just it, just like this. And then we'll hold on to that bead and pull the thread until the beads arrange on top. And then pull the thread again so that you can tighten it up. And then we're going to pick up a frosted white and an 11 0, and we're going to go back through the 8 0 on the opposite side from which we started to attach, just like this, and pull this down. And we have our third unit. We're going to sew up through all of the beads on it. So I've gone through the 11 0, 8 0, column bead 8 0, and 11 0. Then I'm going to go through this 8 0. 
and then see if I can get all the beads on this side. If not, I'll just go a little at a time because they're at a different angle than the other ones were. So I'll, I can go through the column bead here and then I can just go up into the frosted white and the 11 -0. The attaching bead and my unit is complete just like that. So I'm going to go up through the 11 0, 8 0, column bead 8 0, and 11 0, and into the bead on the bottom. And now I'm ready to make my next unit. If you need to, back up the video, watch the units until you get a hang of them, and then continue making these units until you have 10 units or you want to go about a half an inch short of the length you want to achieve as your final bracelet. So if I measure from the middle of the toggle here all the way to the end, I am right at seven inches. When I add the other half of my clasping, I will be about seven and a half inches. So that is the length that 10 units will bring for you. If you have a larger wrist, you'll want to go at least eight inches. If you have a small wrist, then you only want to go to about six inches. So once you have achieved the length that you want, we're going to go ahead and put on our clasping. Now in the necklace, I added another embellishment between the 11 O's and you can do that if you want. You can sew back through and put um, a white 11 0 between the silver ones but I find that that makes it a little stiff and I wanted to keep this very simple so I'm just going to go ahead and put on my clasping now so I'm going to pick up two 11 0 seed beads and an 8 0 and I'm going to drop it down to my piece I'm coming out of the last 8 0 after I have secured my unit now I'm going to go through my clasping and then back through just the 8-0 that I dropped down to my piece. I'm going to hold on to that 8-0 and pull my thread down and my clasp down to where there's no slack. And then I'm going to pick up two more 8-0 seat, or excuse me, 11-0 seat beads and go into the opposite side of the 8-0 that I am attaching to. I'm going to pick it up, pull it through, and now I'm going to sew back through the entire thing two more times. So go ahead and do that. We'll come back, tie off our thread, and see what it looks like. Okay, so I have secured my clasping now, and I'm coming out of the 8 seed bead after going through the entire thing twice. Now, I am coming out of the 8 right here between this 8 and this 11 is a little thread. So we're going to go right underneath that thread, and we're going to create a little loop in our thread as we pull it, go through the loop, and now you want to guide this knot down between those beads, just like that. Then you're going to go into the 11 -0 and 8 -0 and the cylinder bead, and go through the 8 -0 and 11 -0. And right here, you can go underneath the, go in between the beads here, between the 11 -0 and the 8 -0, and again, create a little loop and go through it. Now, as you pull your knot down, adjust it and make sure it goes down between the beads and not on top of them. And then just go through a couple more beads. You can go through and do this as many times as you would like but I am just going to go through these beads here and come through my cylindrical bead here, column bead, whatever the heck it is, and pull my thread through. And then I'm going to cut it off really close to the beads, or actually I think I'll leave a little tag. <laughs> I love my scissors, they're just so great. No matter what pair I get, they just don't work. All right, so I've got this huge tag here, and I'm just gonna get my flame close to it and melt it down into the beads, just like that. And then you can't see it, it creates another little knot to kind of stop it. 
and end the piece nicely. And this is what the piece looks like. Let me see if I can put it on. Let's see how it fits and show it to you. And that's what that looks like. <laughs> really, really cute. Adorable. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and we'll see you next time. Oh, and if you really liked this tutorial, could you hit the subscribe button and perhaps the notification bell, and then we can make some more pieces together. Thank you. Bye-bye.